Hey everybody. Well, it's raining here. It's the first time it's rained all month. It's uh, the first raindrops of June. So if I don't get rained out here, I'm going to make a quick video. It's the perfect time to do this video. It's very interesting. The first rain came because the video was going to be about rain. Um, that's just a funny coincidence to me. But uh, the idea that forests, you know, I've been, uh, I'm very, I'm interested in plant biology now, so I went crazy downloading all the books I possibly could, getting all the information I could, loaded up the Kindle with just tons of stuff, and I've just been reading about terpenes and understanding, you know, uh, when, you, when you talk about plant biology, you have to incorporate the entirety of the system, and it's very difficult to separate talking about plants from even separating them from humans or anything, because everything is so entwined. And uh, I watched this fascinating show the other day, it was called The Terpene Project. And it's where they're doing these experiments in the uh, pine forests, you know, I think California, and they're depriving certain trees of water and diverting that water to other trees. And then analyzing terpene re release. Um, and what they found is that, you know, pine, uh, pinene, which is one of the main uh, the main terpenes of the pine tree. The one when you walked into the pine forest and you smell that piney smell, that's pinene, alpha pinene. And uh, that smell uh, wards off insects and keeps them from eating the trees. But more than that, it's, uh, it does something to us mentally. On top of all that, that uh, they've found that these terpenes actually go up into the atmosphere. The trees, when they're deprived of water, release these terpenes into the atmosphere. And these terpenes, in turn, attach themselves to free radicals in the atmosphere. Then this acts as a nucleus for moisture to attach to, and it rains. So the more terpenes released by a forest, the more it rains, if the moisture is present. I found this absolutely fantastic and fascinating beyond words, but <clears throat> What it's saying is that, you know, these forests do more than just, uh, when they talk about the forest being part of this climate system, um, it's not just a matter of the water evaporates and then rains onto the forest. The water evaporates into the atmosphere and it condenses where it needs to because of these nuclei that attach themselves. Now, now that we have so much more pollution around the world, it's, uh, it's harder because the rain falls maybe in spots where we don't want it. In other words, the forests aren't controlling the moisture. And uh, I think that's an important component to remember. So uh, I won't go too deep into this. <clears throat> One more thing I wanted to point out for growers um, of anything, any type of farmer, gardener. Um, if you're not using mycorrhizae in your potting soil, uh, do yourself a favor and add it. You can inoculate your soil with, uh, with mycorrhizae. For those who don't know, um, it is a fungus. Mycorrhizae is, it creates a network underground of mycelium, which allows the plants to communicate. So what you're doing by it, you can use regular garden soil, till it up, and you can buy a mycorrhizae, it's kind of, you know, it can be expensive, but you buy a package of it and you spread it around and uh, let your soil sit for a little while before you plant. What this does is it creates a pathway. Think of it as the internet. What you're doing is you're laying down internet lines for your plants to communicate. Trees and plants in the forest communicate this way through these mycelial mats. So if the trees on one side are deprived of water, let's say, they can communicate to the other side, hey, could you please release more terpenes as well because we need more water over here, that kind of thing. And plants, although they do, you know, we know they communicate through scents, uh, through, uh, through these terpenes and call and repel animals and insects. Uh, at the same time, they respond to our intentions and the vibrations of our voice in the very slightest way. Um, the plant bioacoustics is what it's called, but when people think of uh, animals hearing, we think of the, you know, the, what, the cochlea or whatever it's called, the, the ear, the components of the ear that allow us to hear by vibrating sound. Not giving credit to the smaller insects who don't have ears like we do. They're not the same. Uh, they pick up vibrations on their bodies. Many lower orders of insects and tiny animals do this, um, don't have external ears. But they're able to hear even the very faintest sounds and respond to them. It may actually be a more efficient way of hearing if you consider it. So, <clears throat> 
although maybe not as clear. You see, if you want to have language, you have to be able to pick up subtle nuances. So anyway, we have, um, <laughs> we have these little insects that don't have ears, they hear through vibration, and uh, these plants have very similar genetics and components that allow them to respond to vibrations in the soil. So if a tree is growing next to another tree, they can communicate through the mycelium, or they can communicate through the root vibrations. But either way, they can sense their environment. They can sense you when you're present, just because of your magnetism. And um, although this is, uh, is it's one of those issues in science that's uh, somewhere between science and pseudoscience. But I'll tell you, 20 years ago, you couldn't tell someone a plant had intelligence uh, without them laughing at you. But I've always known they did. It's always been something that I've been fascinating with. I hug trees, I talk to plants, thinking, am I just crazy? Or is this something that I just feel in my heart? Is it true? Um, or am I just talking to vegetation? And I'm very fortunate to have found that I'm not <laughs> crazy, <laughs> that plants do respond. <clears throat> My cannabis plants this year are just amazing. They're, they're a little over two months old from seed, and they're five feet tall. Uh, they've grown a foot in the last week, and I've been talking to them, touching them, communicating with them. I play them music, you know? And so you can't really say whether or not that that's the reason, but my belief is the interaction with your plants is very essential. You go out in your garden and touch them and talk to them. And if people want to think you're crazy, that's fine, but uh, there's science behind it now, you know. Uh, plants respond to your smells, plants respond to your touch, plants respond to your intentions and your voice. And the more that we bring all this together, the more we're going to understand the world around us. And uh, if, you, if you're a gardener out there, try to add some mycorrhizae to your blend, and I think you'll be happy, happy camper. A little bit rainy, not too bad. Actually, uh, if you want to go online, there's a there's a book on Amazon. It's called Cannabinoids and Terpenes. Uh, it's all about cannabis and terpenes. It's only like four bucks. Uh, pretty cool book. I'm reading it right now. So peace out, everybody. Hope you have the greatest day.